We're all set? Yes, sir. All right, we'll open the meeting of the uh, West Bridgewater Board of Assessors. The time is about 6.07, and this meeting will be taped by the uh, local community TV. Mr. Chairman, John, what do you have for us tonight? Would you like me to read the State of Emergency Public, Please. Emergency Public Access Notice? Please. Due to public safety concerns regarding the COVID-19 pandemic, this meeting will be open to the public through remote participation only. The meeting will be accessible to the public via audio conferencing capabilities by telephone. If you would like to listen live, please dial 425-436-6392 and enter the access code 604-239. To join the teleconference, please be advised that the chairman may not allow questions from the listening public. So I have a couple of announcements, Mr. Chairman. The Department of Revenue sent a notification of free cash approval for the town of West Bridgewater. Very good. As of July 1st, 2020, the general fund free cash is one million fourteen thousand two hundred thirteen dollars and the enterprise fund for the water enterprise is four hundred seventy one thousand six hundred eighty five dollars very good that's a nice little mouth of the town huh not bad yeah a little yeah. slush fund well, it's always good to have free cash yeah one of the um you know, you probably don't know what are the, the towns comparable to us on that on that venue on that same line, free cash. Are they equivalent to us? Doing as good as that, or if you know, the East I haven't Bridgewater. Done any comparison, Steve? Yeah. Just curious. I, I figured could, you wouldn't know, but I'd throw it up there. I could do that for next meeting. Yeah. Now I'm walking in tomorrow morning to the Bridgewater assessors in East Bridgewater. I could ask the clerk that when they come in, but chances are they won't know. <laughs> So we received notification from Clack, Balboni, and Gildia notifying the town of West Bridgewater of the notice of intent to sell property under Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 61A, Horticultural Lean. The record owner is Edward E. Wilbur with a mailing address to the law firm. The two parcels are located off West Street and United Drive. They're in the back of the industrial park on the eastern line across the street from 35 United Drive. Well, hold on a second because when you're going up United Drive from Manley Street, uh, is that, yeah, that's Manley because I lose track of those streets. I appraised that one that I'll put in housing in the old diplomat in Easton on Route 138. On, yes. Okay. Across the line. Right. Their land on that piece goes right up to, to the eastern West Bridgewater line. Yes. Very close to, to the United Drive. They abut these two parcels that are the subject of the... Right. Well, I'm trying to think of... I, I have to see a map. I'm just curious because their land, it was all wet back there. They yep. got a zillion acres. Mm -hmm. And that portion of it, there was three pieces of ball for that. Yep. And um, that was all wet like the size of a football field. It was all huge and they were all wet. Mm -hmm. If you hadn't up United Drive from Manly, it'd be on the westerly side. That's correct. Yeah. So these are on what? These are behind 35? These two abut those, pro those parcels that you appraised in the east. And they're in West Bridgewater and Eastern yeah. or all of West Bridgewater? In West Bridgewater. Well, how, the how West Bridgewater they? portion, they may extend in the east. What's this 61 thing? What are they? Uh, are they hay fields, farming? Or what are they? Well, that's questionable, but they classify it. Yeah, but do they deserve that classification? I mean, are they active in there? Because I didn't see. I was out. This is probably five years ago. I can only yeah. say they must be, Steve, because we review them. Yeah, no, I understand that. I'm just trying to think of what it would be in there. This is across the street from the old uh, distribution center. Yeah, it's all it's all thick brush, and there's a maybe mm -hmm. a, a perennial. Uh, you know, there's a stream in there, and yeah, yeah. they are proposing. I'm sure it's there. It's all. I, I just can't recall it. That's all. Well. Um, there, there's some documentation if you'd like to look at it, Steve. No, I'm all set. What's the lot size of here? Um, Can't be too big. One is 477,000 square feet. Uh, the other one, I think, is about 137,000 square feet. If Four, I so it's about 12 right. acres. Yeah. 
And I know four acres, 170. I'm going to peace right now with four acres. 174,000 feet with four acres. And part of the proposal, um, which is the purpose of the sale, is to construct a 204,000 204, foot proposed warehouse building with wow. parking. Uh, at some, some point, John, not right now, it ain't important, but uh, uh, I just want to look at the map of that and see what you're talking about because I'm just curious, you know, I, I was all over that on the eastern side, in West Bridgewater, but mm -hmm. on the eastern side, and I don't remember any, uh, you know, tracks of land right there. I know right where you're talking about, right, right where you're to drive bends, mm -hmm. to head toward um, uh, Manly Street. Towards West, Manly, it's that? Uh, 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 toward West, no. Towards West Street. No, no, not toward West. Mm -hmm. No, West, from the, across from the Lowe's, what street is that? The across from the Lowe's is 106. No. Across, heading down, is it Manly Street? Manly Street. That's Manly, yeah. yeah. So. And then United Drive is on the left. Yeah, so I'm saying. And it swings out around to the back yeah. to West Street. Right, exactly. What I'm saying, that this land, if, if you're going from West Street, Right, that's what I'm talking about on the yes. right east and stuff. Yes. On that, it must be on that bend somewhere. It is on the bend. Yeah. Okay. okay. What is the old distribution center? The closed distribution center. That was Chadwick's. Chadwick's, Chadwick's right Chadwick's across 35. from Chadwick's. Yeah. And which one's the rooftop solar on? One or thirty-five? Chadwick's. Thirty-five. And who's getting the tiff? Number one. Number one. Yeah. How's that going, by the way? The tiffy. Now <laughs> <laughs> UPS moved out. It would have benefit right the of a so just three personal property just, built based on that tip on the other one. So I, I, I ruined up at the last second, so we had to uh, delay the meeting. To find it. That, that that's unbelievable that they um, I know dissected by right. whatever it is, but that's right. the whole yeah, building has a personal right. property tip on um, chair packs down. Uh, okay. So we have to make it. I looked. Did they ever make a? Did they make a pilot or a voluntary payment? It goes down to 5%, and they, they had a lot of personal property in there. But we, we didn't lose, the, the, the leverage just picks it up, so we don't lose any money. It's just that, that, that seems like unreasonable. It's an unreasonable benefit. Unbelievable that the whole building would, would uh, prosper from that activity. So I will follow up on this. I just want to let you know we received this um, yesterday. And I noted uh, on the list. Of is, it, is there a map in there of the parcels? Not in here. Okay. No. Just, just the um, proposed. I just don't know where there's 12 acres in there that, you know, let's say probably based on that size of building, you need about five or six that are up. Yeah, it's just the schematic. Of and that's what we're going to call this meeting short. Yeah. So I, I looked at the uh, parties that are CC'd on this. Yeah. And one party was noteworthy as Ajax Advisors. LLC, 28 Majority Lane, Scarsdale, New York. Ajax has the pilot program on the building, on the chat Yeah. That's where I heard that name from. You might, you might see another pilot agreement coming down the road if this thing flies. Well, right when they, right when they, um, when we constructed that pilot, the, uh, the, the legislation was kind of iffy then, you know, so, mm -hmm. we'll see. And just really a historic note, you know that the uh, town meeting passed its only by a lot change out on Lincoln Street. Yeah, so what is it now? It's commercial up front? Commercial up front. Um, and industrial? Industrial back, they made it all industrial, correct? That's what the town meeting action was. Yeah, I know they were talking about, I watched part of it, and the, those developers were talking about um, some access way in there, giving Shell some of that land. So, because Shell wants to reload that station like they're all doing now, you know, putting one of those in. Yeah, um, it'd be, it's right for it. that was part of the proposed deal. No, it, I, I, he just suggested that if Shell will rock and rolls with them, they'll, they'll give them some land so they can get that, you know. Because they need more land than they have, I think, to make that one of those, you know, Cullen Farm type of places. Yeah, it's a tight spot. Um, that's a pretty, uh, the, the development there is extensive. They got, it was the guy was saying on, on Lincoln Street down 
Yeah, the ball field's a little past it. There's like 32 overhead doors going in for a, a prospective tenant, which means distribution warehouse, which means, you know, a lot of trucks and such. So, I didn't get the full, I didn't watch the whole thing. I really, we put so much time in last time, you know, eight, ten years ago, a lot of time, and it just went by because of the economy, it dropped by the wayside. So I'm not sure what's going to happen with this one, you know. There's a lot of building out there, because they had, they, the last one was a 900, over 900,000 feet. Oh, you know, there was commercial retail, was I think well, maybe all, definitely. You know, combination. Yeah, but there might have been some residential, I'm not sure. Okay. You know, like if they handle them all, they're putting in 400 units. Have you seen that development? No. no. Oh, by the other day, they ripped down the mall. They raised the mall. And the sticking point was the story height, and they, they, they buckled into the developer, which they should. It's right near the highway. And they're putting a, a cataclysmic, uh, a huge uh, retail, uh, office and um, apartments. First floor office retail. Yeah, but the apartments, it's like 400 units going up like four floors, you know. We did a piece for the, for the town recently across the street from that main light for an access into something else, and the prices around there are pro it's, they're huge because of that development, I think. I think it's going to work. The malls I brought, to the, it had gone by, and need, all like the Galleria that Connie bought, it's going to need a refit, you know, mm -hmm. and that's what they did. And the town, the town played ball with them, which they should have. You know, it's going to be a huge tax uh, contributor to the town. I was, I was reading somewhere that they're talking about converting a lot of those small buildings into distribution centers, just converting them. Well, you know, why not? Because like, you know, the Galleria one, mm -hmm. he's probably waiting for the, for the, which I think will come, the casino, the, a state casino, um, mm -hmm. not, not, uh, not, not the uh, class three like uh, area C license, mm -hmm. but. They're all, those, those major ones like Brain Tree, you know, all of them you think of, they're six feet from the highway. Yeah. So why not, you know? Okay, so the other item I have, I want to pass over the COVID-19 pandemic. I think everybody's aware of yeah. what's going on. Um, but I do want to discuss the status of the part-time secretary issue. This is something that the board needs to give some consideration to. I'm not asking for a decision tonight. Obviously, Cheryl's not here either. And I, you know, I think the whole board needs to think about this and weigh in on this. Um, so I've had, why do pass this out, sorry. So I just prepared a little. Are you, uh, are you aware of what's going on with that, with the hours? Um, I have no idea what yeah, that's talking about. So it's no, just a thumbnail. It's yeah. not our bad, believe me. prepared a thumbnail sketch so then I'll make it brief okay as you know the job was advertised as a 25 hour per week holy sh 25 hour a week position which would equal 1305 hours per year um, the current employee, Marianne, uh, recently retired from the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, which means she can only work 960 hours per week unless, per year, per year. Yeah. I'm sorry, per year, yeah. thank you, unless she wants to pay a penalty to the IRS for any hours yeah. that she works over 960 hours. So the difference between the 1305 hours and the 960 hours is 340 hours or 13.6 weeks or 68 days difference. Um, there is proposed legislation. It was passed by the legislature at the end of the session last August, but because it was at the end of the session, the governor had the ability to appeal without the legislation being able, able to override it because the session was over. So a new bill has been introduced for this session to increase the hours to 1,200. Um, it is, it, it's come out of one committee, it's in the Ways and Means Committee right now. Ways and Means is dealing with the budget and that's What's going, to what, take, what's going to occupy their time? If you know, I, I have no clue. What drove that decision of 960 versus whatever? Was it uh, compensatory you know, uh, of money? Or? 
you know, because yeah, I don't know, I don't understand the rationale. See if it's nine sixty or any other number, but because other municipal people I know that have retired, you know, they're, they're not state like like Marianne, but mm -hmm. they come under nothing like that. If they're state, county, municipal, or what's the fourth category? Um, what up? They would all be re all the same required a nine sixty. I I disagree. I thought what I'm saying is that under the municipal one, the, the town say mm -hmm. they can't get back into once they go to the retirement, mm -hmm. they can't get back into um, a municipal, you know, a full time with the benefits type of thing. But they certainly can go part time without the benefits. And I know that for a fact. Okay, now what I forget forget about all that. That's not really important. What's important here is what we have in front of us mm -hmm. is we got to figure out what we want to do um, to keep the employee best and make some, like, like I talked about briefly, um, we're going to need a meeting with the human resource officer who I very much want to talk to. Right, shouldn't this, I mean, just to, not to interrupt anybody, but based on what I'm reading here, shouldn't we just be kicking this up to HR and let them sort this out and figure out what needs to be done? And because I don't know if we should even be discussing it without the right, but, even here. But, but I want to. I agree. You know, we can even do an executive session. What I want to do is try to offer. You know, if nothing can be done right now because of that legislation, try to offer some in-house solutions to that. Well, um, in answer to your question, Paula, I think first of all, I have a, a duty to bring this to your attention. That's number one, which I'm doing tonight. Right. No, which is good. But it seems that Steve. It, it would have been nice if we had gotten an email about this beforehand because I would have said I don't think we should discuss this at the meeting that this should go right up to HR and let them figure it out as I said I felt the duty to bring it to your attention and I believe it has to be done in open session I called the um, Attorney General's office to ask if I could discuss this in executive session with the board open session executive in the executive session with the board and the attorney general's office said not at this point if the board was talking about termination of the individual yeah. then you could discuss that in or allowed to discuss it in open session yeah. and believe me <clears throat> this is just a very what do you want to call it vague you know discussion nothing that's correct all, all i want to say is you know the if, if we bring the human resource which we're going to um either have some what we consider solutions to temporary solutions until they change that legislation on if we can do that or not. Right. But uh, I'm not happy with this at all. Okay, so if I could just please finish my presentation. Yep. Because some of what you're asking is, is in my presentation. So um, if the legislation passes uh, the House bill, and to increase the hours to 1,200 hours, that would only be 100 hours less than what sure. the job is posted for, or 4.35 weeks, or 20 days, uh, which I think would put the board in a, a different position for a discussion. The board options, in my opinion, discuss it with whoever you wish to discuss it with, would be four that I've listed. One would be immediate termination, which is not recommended. I don't recommend that. The second one would be phased termination sometime between now and March 5th. The March 5th date is significant because that is the end of the employee's probationary period. In other words, the board could terminate this individual or any individual during that six, peri six month period without any reason, justification, just say, sorry, you terminated. Um, the third option would be termination on the last day, March 5th, which is the end of the probation period. Or the individual could work 1,305 hours until the 960 hour restriction is reinstated, which would go beyond the March 5th period, which would be the next calendar year, which would end December 31st, no, 2021. I, yeah, I, I, well, I'm not amenable to, you know, 
obviously there's a, a termination that's, that, that's, that's part of that, but there's certainly something we can do we'll have to talk with the resource officer because um, I don't know what, how the union handles this stuff, but we certainly could make the work week to keep the, the employee that would, what, what you're spending time and money to invest in a pretty intensive job. And, you know, uh, from what I hear, you know, it's worth that. So somehow, some way, either through the human resource, if she can tell us about, you know, rework those hours until such time we can go to the 1,200 hours. And what I mean by rework the hours, however, however you know, you see fit, like, for example, she's 25 hours now, you know, cut the work week down to, you know, a couple days or 18 hours or something. Um, I, I know it's, it's tough, but, you, you know, That's something we got to do. If you, you know, she's been here what since uh, a little after Labor Day, over a little over a month. September eighth. Yeah. So almost one month. One month tomorrow. Um. I'm just. I'm just. I'm just not happy with this because what happened with the interview process, right? And this should have been, you know something that was raised before we hired the gal. That's correct. It should have been vetted. <laughs> Absolutely. It was not vetted. Here we are. And like I said, I, I have, it, it's, it's only fair to you, the board, to know. It's only fair to the individual to know. And I'm going to speak with her tomorrow after I've made the board aware of this. And I told her on Monday that, well, I, I want you to hold off on the options so we find out seriously all of our options. I'm not. I'm not exercising any options. No, 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 no. This is a board decision. Right. And I'm presenting the board. Yeah. With what I believe are your options. If there are other options, I'm not aware of them because I spoke with the human resources officer and I spoke with the union representative. Um, so <clears throat> certainly, if you want to speak with either the union rep. Were the human resources? No, no, it, 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 or both I, I, of them? I'm, no, I'm, I'm sure it, 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 they're the uh, the human resource department or office, you know, oversees the stuff. They make the call, you know. All I'm saying is that if it is a is a is a viable option to re, to re, refit her work week or work hours down to 960, or I'm not sure what I'm talking about there. But we got to make we got to avail ourselves to the if the union. I don't know. What they say about that, you know, obviously no clue, but I want them all on the table here. You know, all yours here. I know you just, you know, all terminate, terminate, terminate. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's not terminate. The fourth option is work the oh, hours. Yeah. 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 But, but the, pro the inherent problem is if she can't work more than 960 hours, how is the work going to get done? You know, I, 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 you know, I don't know. I, I don't know, know that the board has been advocating for a full time position. I, I couldn't. I, I, I thought of that. Believe me. So this, the position that you advertised for and hired the individual individual for was twenty five. Yep. I just want to say that you know I'm not I'm not sure, but uh, the the employee, as far as I can see or recall, because her former employer was moving that she was retiring from the Commonwealth. So somebody should have said, hey, you're a retired, you're gonna be a retired state employee, you know, um, you can only work X amount of hours. But that's somebody's you know, due diligence here. And it's certainly not the board of assessment. Evidently that was <clears throat> by, by the union representative. Okay. Uh, what I want to do can we um, schedule a meeting or have the human resource officer go over it? Or you know, come down and talk to us? I'll, I'll, but, but, I, I don't know, John. Figure it out. You know, I, I don't know. I'm, just, I'm not happy with this thing because from the get-go, this should have been on the table. Yeah. You know, I, it's not, not, you know. I, Steve, obviously, I'm amenable to do whatever the board wants me to do. Yeah. It's a, it's a no-brainer. We, so we got to talk to somebody, or they got to, you know, lead us down the uh, down the promised land here of you know what we got to do in the situation. So, would you like me to invite the human resources officer to a meeting? Would you like me to speak with her 
and report back to the board? Would you like something in writing? Well, I think we all need to be in the conversation. Well, so we'll, we'll, we'll invite her in here then. Yeah, no, I would like that. Yeah, that's fine, yeah. To your next meeting, I presume. Yeah, and, and, and I'm hoping, you know, we can talk about it, but I'm hoping she can, we can emphasize that, you know, with that, that legislation coming down the pipeline eventually, that we can do something temporarily to keep the employee. Okay. Anything Thank else? Thank you. So I had said um, meeting minutes from June 3rd and June 17th this morning. I don't know if you had time to look at them. I don't know if you want to approve them. I don't know if you want to It was actually them. no attachment. <laughs> <laughs> so no, we didn't get anything. All right. I'll, 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 I'll still approve them. <laughs> you need a second vote. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So I'll put those off to the Yeah. Team. I even checked my, did you sign today, John? I even checked my email. That's Not all right, right, Steve. He forgot the attachment, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was easy reading. Yeah. And there's no correspondence. You have um, a number of things to sign. If, if you get those signed before you go home this evening, they're on Paul's desk right now. Um, are we going to have an executive session? Yep. Because I have something for that, the uh, the work up on that thing on that. Okay. But please sign these things before you leave because Danielle is going to check her signatures. Good. Before you she want to keep Danielle nice and room. busy over there, you know, definitely. Maybe skip a couple see so she catches them, you know. <laughs> so other than that, um, a motion to go into executive session would be in order, Mr. Chairman, to review applications for abatement, exemption, and classification relative to purpose number seven of Master and Laws, Chapter 59, Section 60, and to review and discuss strategy of pending appellate tax board cases relative to purposes three and seven of Master and Laws, Chapter 59, Section 60, because to do so in open session could have a detrimental effect on the board's litigating position. To review and approve any qualified executive, there are any, so skip that. And to negotiate the principal assessor's employment agreement relative to purpose two, master of laws, chapter 59, section 60, and not to return to open session. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion that the, the board goes into executive sessions for the reasons that Principal Cecil Donahue just mentioned. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Roll call. Roll call. Uh, Cecil Bunker? Yes. McCarthy? Yes. The time is 6.30.